fancy school today. Do you know what? I don't fancy work either. Maybe I'll just stay at home. Really? Yeah. I'll probably get the sack. Which means we won't have any money. So we'll get the house repossessed and end up living in the streets. But I don't fancy going to work. Why should I? No need to be so sarky. School, young man. What is it, love? You worried about the concert? A bit. I'm going to be the proudest mum in the world on Friday. You worked so hard for it. And you got that rehearsal with Miss Bone at lunchtime? Maybe I could just skip school and go straight there. No chance. You're well enough to rehearse, you're well enough to go to school. I'll give you a call later, see how you're doing. Hello. Bye. Are you deaf, Wilton? No. Got problems with memory loss? No. Or is it just that you're completely and totally gay? I reckon you must be. It's delicate! Hear that voice? Delicate! I told you what I'd do if you brought this into school again. Please don't. So, if I see you with it again today, I'll start by smashing it into tiny pieces. Then it'll be your turn. Am I going to get sacked? Why? You, you haven't done anything wrong? How are you doing? You had any breakfast? I'm not hungry. The DI wants to see you again. I've, I've already told her everything I know. Just a few more questions. And then can I go home? We'll see. Okay. Lots to do today. You like work, don't you? Of course. Shame you have to take any breaks at all, really. Saying that, though, you didn't actually do the full holiday, did you? Can't say I blame you, spending all that time with Heston when you've got to work with him as well. So when's he back? Sometime today, I should think. Oh, yeah. Greetings all. Welcome back. Place fall apart without me? Well, everyone seems to have managed. Glad to hear it. I bring gifts. <laughs> A cheeky Barolo for you. Full-bodied, aromatic, fruity, bit like myself. Fine soaps <laughs> from Firenze. Yes. Yeah, oh, thank, thank you. Very much. you. Lemons. Mm. I'll save yours for later. What is going on with those two? Honestly, the level of gossip in this place is not what it once was. Morning. Beautiful day, isn't it? You're in a good mood. Well, no law against that, is there? You look like the cat who's got the cream. Not yet, but I'm working on it. Just got into you. Fingers crossed, but I may actually have found something that finally works. Brilliant. What? I can't say just yet. Mr. Mapman said it was some sort of panic attack. What is it, James? What's wrong? Nothing. Is it the concert? Have you got problems at school? I give up. Get in the car. Are we going home? No, you need to see a doctor. She's still very shaky. My heart bleeds. She's just lost a boyfriend. Maybe she should be a bit more choosy about the company that she keeps. I'm under a lot of pressure from up top. I need a successful prosecution, and I think that Miss Malone holds the key. Yeah, well, she's scared. Why don't you sit in? You sure that's OK? I know her. So? She might trust you a bit more. Once she relaxes, she's more likely to tell us what we need to know. Oh, you're the boss. Yes, Sergeant. I am. Let's see if the night in the cells has made you a little bit more talkative. It's 
sleep well? No. You might have to get used to looking at the world through bars. It's not your job to anticipate the findings of a jury, Detective Inspector. Thank you, Ms Mortimer. So, when did you first find out that Scott was a dealer? He wasn't. My client has consistently said she knows nothing about heroin supply, Detective Inspector. Perhaps you should try a different tack. Could do. Trouble is, I'm not sure I believe her. What you believe is hardly going to stand up in a court of law, is it? You need proof. Which is why we're here. I wasn't involved in drugs, and neither was Scott. Really? He was in the wine trade. I saw him at work. I met the other traders. Are you sure that's what they were? Yes. Who told you? Scott. Did you believe everything he told you? Of course. Did you ever notice anything different in the last few weeks? He was upset because his mum had died not long before I met him. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Didn't stop him from being a smackhead, though, did it? Detective Inspector! All right. All right. He loved her. And he loved me. And he cared about me. We were soulmates. Not partners in crime. You've got it all wrong. Scott was innocent. And so am I. So, have you had this before? The uh, hyperventilator? I've never seen it. Any idea what brought it on? Are you stressed about anything at the moment? He's got a concert coming up. He plays the violin. It's not that. What is it then? Come on, love. We're only trying to help. Why don't you just tell us what's wrong with you? Is it something personal? You know, man stuff. Mum. His dad's not around much, you see, to have those little chats. I see. Would you rather I left the room? You can talk it through with the doctor, if that's OK with you. Yeah? What do you think, James? I'm mean, almost best for you, love. I'll, I'll wait outside. Do you know the flats on Hawfield Street? Yes. Did you spend much time there? No. Your ex was a bit of a regular. You don't have to take my word for it. I am showing Miss Malone photographs A, L, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. One moment, Detective Inspector. Why wasn't I informed of this evidence before? I'm informing you now. I'll need to speak to my client so we can discuss how to proceed. In a minute. I must insist! Maybe we should. Like I said, Sergeant, in a minute. What about this then, Cherry? What's he doing, do you think? Swapping stamps? Could be anything. Heroin. No. He was a known user and dealer. I think you'd have more sense, given that she must have seen what it did to his client. No way. How do you explain these, then? I think now would be a good time for you to have a little chat with your client, Ms Mortimer. Interview suspended at 09.35. So are you nervous about the concert? No, I said. Yeah, I just thought that with your mum not being here. It's not that. So what is it? Are you any good at the violin? Well, Miss Bowen says I am. What about the other kids? Some of them reckon it's stupid. Do you have friends at school? Yeah, but they're all geeks, like me. I wouldn't say you're that geeky. Take it from one who knows. Zach Pritchard thinks I am. Him and his mates are always having a go at me, because I get good marks and play the violin. I wouldn't say any of those things are geeky. Teenagers can say some pretty hurtful stuff sometimes. He's going to beat me up. I know it. Have you told the teachers? I can't. If he finds out... And you don't want to tell your mum for the same reason? I can't tell anyone. Well, you told me. So that's the start. Now we've got to figure out what to do next.
Feeling better, Miss Malone? You've had a chat with Miss Mortimer, who should have informed you that we have some video footage to show you. Yes. Good. Still saying that you didn't know about Scott and the drugs? Oh, that question has been asked a few times now. And I will continue to ask it until I get a proper answer. There's no doubt about the photos, Cherry. No. I'm showing Miss Malone video footage AL6. Ready? So, there's an excellent coming in there. Tonight, they've got three kilos coming in by Harwich. We should be able to get yours to you by tomorrow. Sweet. I think you're going to be able to take delivery. Should be. If not, I'm not just the person. Hey, yeah. <laughs> like I said, gorgeous. <laughs> so, how's the deal going? Great, yeah. Pretty much done, actually. Oh. Let me introduce you. Guys, this is Cherry. Hi. Yeah, Cherry, this is Tony. Hi. Karim. Hi. And last but not least, Paul. Hey. <laughs> Lovely. Still saying you knew nothing about it. I didn't see a camera. That's the general idea. We've been watching Scott and his friends for quite some time. Not a question. We were talking about wine. Expert, are you? I was pretending. You're pretty good at that, aren't you? In fact, I'd go as far as to say that everything you've told me so far is a pack of lies. Wouldn't you agree? You know, I used to get made fun of at school. Really? You could at least try to sound a bit more surprised. I was a bit like you, I suppose. I studied hard and I sang in the school choir. I always wanted to be a doctor, so I knew I had to keep my head down and work, and that didn't go down so well with some of the bullies. Why are they like that? It's because they're scared. Zach Pritchard. He's not scared of anybody. Have you ever tried making friends with him? No chance. He said if I bring the violin to school, he's going to get me. Maybe I should hit him first. Do you think that's a good idea? Probably not. Have faith in yourself and what you do. You can get through this, believe me. If you say so. I do. You feeling up to going back to school yet? I'm not sure. What will you say to my mum? Well, I don't have to say anything to her. But if I was being bullied, I know that my mother would be the first person I want to talk to. And the school. They'd be able to help. No, I've got to sort this out for myself. All right. Come on. Tell me about Scott's flat. What about it? You've been living there recently, haven't you? Yes. I'm now showing Miss Malone a piece of evidence reference AL24. Who's this, then? We found him in the flat. I bought that for Scott. Sweet. Has he got a name? Eric. I think Eric has got into some nasty habits. I am now showing Miss Malone photograph AL25. What do you think that is? Heroin. Part of the Harwich consignment. Pretty much tracked it all the way from Afghanistan. Never seen it before. Then how do you explain this? I am now showing Miss Malone a piece of evidence AL27. Do you recognise the signature? It's mine. Very good. The package that you signed for was filled with the heroin that ended up inside Eric. I didn't know. I didn't put it there. Please, you've got to believe me. If 
you didn't put it there, Cherry, who did? My client has told you it wasn't her. Who she thinks it might have been is irrelevant, surely. Who else, apart from you and Scott, could have access to the flat? <laughs> I don't know. Did anyone else have a key? A, a cleaner, maybe? I don't think so. Then perhaps you could explain to me how the heroine ended up inside Eric, a gift that you admit that you bought for your boyfriend in a flat where you were living together. <laughs> Was it Scott then? <laughs> Couldn't be. I am now showing Miss Malone video footage AL7. <laughs> we picked this up off CCTV. When Scott saved me from the mugger, he, he got my bag back. But that proves that he was a good person. Does it? <laughs> a regular knight in shining armour, isn't he? <laughs> a record, Miss Malone has been sick. I think that's enough, Detective Inspector, don't you? Take her away, clean her up. This is highly irregular. I'm just doing my job, Ms Mortimer. Like yourself. We'll have a chat later, when she's feeling better. Do you not think that she might be telling the truth? Possibly, but she's my only way into that gang and I need more. But at the moment, you haven't actually got anything concrete against her, have you? It's all circumstantial. I'm aware of that, Sergeant. How long before I have to charge her or let her go? Under three hours. We'll let her sweat for a bit longer and then we'll have one more crack. Wilson. Hi, Zach. Come on, get him. Oh. oh. <sighs> hey, wait, where are you going? You're all right. Get off me. Don't be stupid, he's a doctor. Okay, come on, let's get you inside. Give me a hand. Well, the good news is there's nothing broken. We'll just get the nurse to strap it up for you. What's your name? Zach. Zach Pritchard. Hi. I'm Dr. Bond. Interview resumed at 13.30. Present, Ms. Malone, D.I. Lucas, Sergeant Hollins, and Ms. Mortimer of Fallon and Bird Associates. Feeling better? Miss Malone has declined to answer that question. So, let's have a little recap, shall we? We've established that your boyfriend was a serial drug user and dealer. We've also established that you were a known associate not only of his, but of his business partners too. It's a matter of record. We know that drugs were found in the flat which you shared with the deceased. Drugs which you signed for and which were hidden in a teddy bear which you admit that you gave to Scott. You say the deceased was your soulmate, your best friend, the love of your life. And yet you expect us to believe that despite living in each other's pockets, you didn't have a clue what he was up to. I didn't. You're lying. Inspector Lucas. Do you know what? You're either the best liar in Leatherbridge or the most gullible person I have ever met. Either way, Scott is dead, killed by the filth that he was selling. And there's nothing that you can do to protect him. So why don't you just tell me the truth? <laughs> That's enough. Uh. Uh. 
If you intend to charge my client, then do so. Either that, or let her go. <laughs> Bail her. Interview concluded. D.I. Lucas has left the room. for six weeks, for months. Ah, oh, best place for her. But the DI will want to see her again. And if I know her, she won't give this up without a fight. Oh, it's a cherry get mixed up in all this. Love, apparently. Hmm. A couple of days rest and you'll be right in the rain. Do you, um, do you mind if I ask you something? What? Why have you got it in for James? What's he told you? Well, you didn't need to tell me anything. I saw you and your mates chasing him. Well, I say mates. They didn't stick around very long, did they? So? Why were you chasing him? Because he's a geek. He's got a load of loser mates. And how does that hurt you? It doesn't. So why are you so intent on bullying him? Spoken with your mum. She'll be over to collect you soon. James is still here. Why don't you show him in? I was just messing about. Well, that's your idea of fun, is it? No. So what is? Football. Any good? I play for the school. And that comes naturally, does it? I have to train. Hard? Most nights. And your mates, the guys you hang around with, they'll be the other boys from the team, right? Mostly. So really, you're just like James, aren't you? What? You work hard at something that you enjoy, and you hang around with a bunch of losers too, judging by the way your mates suddenly vanished earlier. All right, James. James, have you ever seen Zach play football? Yeah. Is he even good? Rashad's as good as him. You play football? I was captaining my team at under 11. Why did you stop? My dad left. Thought music was a better bet. You reckon? What, don't you like music? My mum says it's stupid. What about your dad? He's a loser. Ran off with the singer in his band. My mum burned all his CDs. It must be tough for both of you not having your dads around. So, have you ever heard James play the violin? No. I'm told he's very good. Mind you, it was James who told me. All right, why don't you play something now for us, if that's all right with you? Whatever. And I should be getting off to rehearsals. What's left of it? Do you want a lift? Are you sure? Yeah, and if you ever do fancy a kick around, once my leg's better. That'd be good, yeah. I'll see you then, James. And good luck with the concert. Thanks.
You must be Stuart. My name's Steamer. This pass is to be through shortly to see you, Mr. Parker. The name's Parks. Well, oh, some names very easy to forget. What? He thinks he can just come here and I'll say yes? Your grandmother has had about as much as she can cope with. Any more of this and she could have another stroke. Do you understand? My shirt needs ironing. Well, iron it then. Jessica answers a call for help from a relative in Murder, she wrote, next this afternoon here on BBC One Scotland.